Hey everyone, it's Jenna from Cruise Blog, and today we're going to be talking about 11 things I loved and hated about my first Princess Cruise. Let's jump in. I recently returned from my first ever Princess Cruise, a seven-night Alaska sailing on the Royal Princess. Princess Cruises is one of the most popular American cruise lines, and they are most well-known for their Alaska itineraries, in which they are a market leader. Before my Princess Cruise, I had heard excellent things about the cruise line, from the dining choices to the Alaska-themed programming, so I was curious to discover all my ship had to offer. Like any cruise line, you're sure to find things you liked and disliked during your time on board. During my Princess Cruise, I found myself enjoying certain aspects of the vacation much more than others. Here are 11 things I loved and hated about my first Princess Cruise. First, I loved using the medallion instead of a traditional cruise ship keycard. Instead of a cruise ship keycard, Princess Cruises uses what's called a medallion. Like a keycard, a medallion functions as a way to open your cabin door, make onboard payments, and embark and disembark your cruise ship in ports of call. Unlike a traditional keycard though, it's small and wearable. About the size of a quarter, you can wear the medallion around your neck or as part of a bracelet. This makes it much more convenient to carry around the ship and you're less likely to lose your keycard when it's attached to your body. Aside from the convenience of wearing a medallion were two other major benefits. The medallion's tracking feature and automatic cabin door opening feature. The shipmate locator feature allows you to track your cabin mates from anywhere around the ship. Another convenient benefit of the medallion was that my cabin door would unlock automatically when I neared it. As I walked down my cabin's hallway, my room door would ping to my medallion, at which point it would unlock the door so I did not have to do it myself. While a small benefit, it was another helpful feature of the medallion. However, one thing I hated was the ship design of the Royal Princess, as it wasn't suited for cold weather. I was taken aback by the design of the Royal Princess, and not in a good way. Generally speaking, if a cruise line plans for a ship to sail in cold weather destinations, they will design the ship to offer the most comfort in chilly temperatures. It's common to see ships with ample indoor spaces cruising to Alaska, many of which feature indoor pools and lounges with window views. The Royal Princess, on the contrary, seemed better suited for Caribbean itineraries compared to Alaska cruises. There was no indoor pool space and hardly any indoor lounges with ocean views. This leads to a severe disconnect between passengers and Alaska's stunning scenery unless they want to stand outside in frigid temperatures. Even where there could have been indoor lounges, there were not. I was stunned to see jewelry stores placed against floor-to-ceiling windows in the ship's atrium instead of comfortable seating near the windows to watch the views. Fortunately, we had relatively good weather during our June sailing, so we could sit outside with little discomfort. If you're considering an Alaska cruise during a colder month though, I would not advise sailing on a ship without indoor pools and ample ocean views. That being said, I loved the option to do self-service laundry on board. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the Royal Princess had self-service laundry. On every cabin floor was a laundromat with several washers and dryers. Self-service laundry is relatively rare on cruise lines, most of which require you to send in laundry to the ship's laundry services. The price of washing a bag of laundry this way is often exorbitant. It's not uncommon to pay $35 to $50 to wash a small bag of dirty clothes. On my Princess Cruise, I paid $3 to wash and $3 to dry my clothes. A packet of laundry detergent was only $1.50, so washing a huge load of clothes only set me back $7.50. This was an absolute steal and it helped me save money on my Alaska cruise. Although I enjoyed that aspect of my cruise, I hated the extremely small, crowded hot tubs. As mentioned previously, I found the design of the Royal Princess to be inadequate for an Alaska cruise. Because it was almost always too cold to use the pools, this resulted in many passengers crowding in the hot tubs at one time. At times I saw around 10 or 15 people trying to squeeze into one hot tub, and it was definitely not something I was eager to do myself. I typically enjoy spending time at the hot tub on an Alaska cruise, so I was disappointed with the tiny jacuzzis available. But one aspect of the pool deck I loved was the ice cream station, and I loved the variety of soft serve ice cream flavors. In my experience, most cruise lines offer just three ice cream options, vanilla, chocolate, and twist. But on the Royal Princess, I enjoyed six ice cream flavors throughout the week. Let's just say I made it a point to visit the ice cream station at least once a day during my cruise. 
Speaking of food, I hated the dining room menu as it often didn't appeal to my tastes. I don't generally consider myself a picky eater, but I was disappointed in the main dining room menu on my princess cruise. Hated is probably too strong a word as I did enjoy most of the dishes I tried, but I was not impressed overall with the options. As a vegetarian, I was often disappointed with the vegetarian options, which frequently centered around mushrooms or heavy, creamy sauces. In addition, the menu mainly featured American or Americanized dishes, and I missed having the variety of cuisines and cooking styles I've experienced on other cruise lines dining room menus. However, I loved the Asian noodle station in the buffet, which was an explosion of flavor. Although the main dining room menu fell flat for me, I couldn't get enough of the Asian noodle station in the buffet. I'll always choose international cuisine over standard American fare, so I was delighted to see an authentic, relatively healthy Asian noodle station every evening at the buffet. This station served ramen noodle bowls, allowing guests to choose from a variety of vegetables, toppings, meats, and broth. And I was obsessed at first bite. Another thing I hated on the Royal Princess was the lackluster service I experienced. While I understand that cruise ship crew members work extremely hard, I was disappointed with the service on my Princess Cruise. Although we encountered several friendly crew members during the sailing, the majority of the service was pretty standoffish. For an American cruise line, I expected American level service, but I found the service to be more in line with a European expectation of customer service. There was little small talk between crew members and guests, and I missed the friendly welcome back on board greetings after returning from a day in port. The rushed, unfriendly service made me intimidated to ask questions to crew members. Even though we certainly encountered friendly crew members during our time, nothing wowed me about the service on my Princess Cruise. One thing I absolutely loved, however, was visiting Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve. Princess Cruises is one of the few cruise lines to have access to Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve, and it was a highlight of my time on board. Glacier Bay National Park is a 3.3 million acre park of temperate rainforest, jagged mountains, and colossal glaciers. It's truly a remarkable place to visit on an Alaska cruise, yet only select cruise lines have permits to enter the park. I spent the entire day on the outer decks of the Royal Princess as we sailed through the narrow fjords of Glacier Bay. From witnessing the majestic Marjorie Glacier to spotting dozens of sea otters swimming near the ship, it was a memorable experience that allowed me to better immerse myself in Alaska's grandeur. Another thing I hated though was that the order to anywhere food delivery service rarely worked. Princess Cruise's Ocean Now feature promises the ability to promptly get food and drinks delivered to you from anywhere on board. If you're at a bar and suddenly desire a cheese pizza, you are theoretically able to order the pizza on the app and receive it in around a half hour. In reality though, I found that the Ocean Now feature rarely worked. Time and time again, I tried to order snacks like quesadillas and cookies to my location, yet I found that the order rarely arrived. In fact, the Ocean Now feature only worked for us two times during the sailing. The first was when we ordered two lattes, which came with an added cost compared to the free options. The second was when we ordered from our stateroom television instead of the mobile app. I definitely enjoyed the free delivery option when it worked, but I wish I could have successfully utilized it more during my sailing. And finally, the last thing I loved on the Royal Princess was my cabin. I booked the cheapest cabin for my Princess Cruise, which is an interior cabin, and I was impressed with the cabin's size and layout. Most interior cabins consist of one small room without any separation between the beds and other living spaces. Although adequate given the price, I never find myself spending much time in tiny inside rooms. When I entered my cabin on the Royal Princess for the first time, I was pleased to see a spacious cabin with a large amount of walking space. Behind a wall was a closet area perfect for changing and getting ready, and at the edge of the closet was our cabin's bathroom. Having this separate area was convenient, as I could wait in the main cabin space while my sister got ready in the bathroom and closet area. The split design was something I hadn't previously experienced in inside cabins, and it will be hard to go back to a standard cabin design on my upcoming cruises. Well, that's everything I loved and hated about my first Princess Cruise. Have you ever sailed on Princess Cruises before? If so, let me know what you love and hate about the cruise line in the comments below. Thanks for watching and be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so that way you are notified when we at Cruise Blog post a new video. Until next time, happy cruising!